Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's house as we gather for worship and praise today. And we have the opportunity to welcome another child into God's family through holy baptism. So we rejoice at that. And because the order of baptism is the first thing in the service, um, please note that the opening hymn is in the baptismal liturgy, which is at insert in your bulletin. Uh, the hymn will be up on the TV, but the actual rite of baptism is only in the insert, so you won't see that on the TV. So if you didn't get a bulletin and you want one, please do so. We'll begin with our opening hymn, number 592, Dearest Jesus, We Are Here. According to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. 
Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Ori according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. So I ask you, is it your intention to serve Ori as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Congregation is seated. Ori Wilfred Skinner, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I do you renounce all his works? Yes, I do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Ori Wilfred Skinner, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Uh, 
flip them around. There you go. That's exactly perfect. Perfect. There you go. Ori Wilfred Skinner, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know, oh, that's a little shot. Oh, yeah. There you go. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and he ever us of all the of heaven, one and only Christian of the church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim his praises, who call us out of darkness into his father's light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. I invite the congregation to stand. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and that you have granted Ori the new birth and holy baptism, made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Heavenly Father, you sent your own Son into this world as the child of the Virgin Mary. We thank you for the life of this child entrusted to our care. Help us remember that we are all your children, and so love and nurture him that he may attain to the full stature intended for him in your eternal kingdom. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord and giver of life, Look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child, and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Ori Wilfred Skinner, peace be with you. Amen. And at this time, our LWML representative is going to present a gift. On behalf of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League of Canada, our society here in Zion, I'd like to present you with this gift to use with Ori as he grew up in his family. Congratulations. We'll conclude our baptism rite of baptism with the fifth verse of our hymn. <laughs> Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sin, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with thee there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his son, the bridegroom of the church, he makes us his holy bride. Anticipating the heavenly wedding feast, we seek God's grace now and call on him for forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Lord, we are sinners who can't help ourselves. Forgive us for all our sins of the past in thought, word, and deed. Give us your mercy and grace in our day. Lead us to obey and serve you and love one another in the future and on into the eternity you have promised. Jesus promised the disciples, your sorrow will turn into joy, and he promises the spring of the water of life without payment. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our responsive psalm this morning is selected verses from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth. Kings of the earth and all peoples, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Praise the Lord. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for His name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made His people strong. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed, where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 11. It's also the basis for our sermon today. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air, and I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, what God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll rise for our Holy Gospel. Our Holy Gospel is from John chapter 16. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and... You will not see me, and again, a little while, and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Well, Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves? What I mean by saying, a little while, and you will not see me, and again, a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time, we'll have our children come forward for the children's talk.
Good morning. Great to see you and everyone else here today, as well as the people that are joining us on Facebook. I have a treat, but it's only to look at, I'm sorry, because I wonder how many people put up a hand that you might consider. Oh, my goodness sakes, where is the board? You know what it is? Peanut butter. How many people like peanut butter? I like peanut butter. I never used to like peanut butter, but the older I get, the better I love it. I just really, I could take a spoon and just scoop it out. But I know we can't have it here because some people may have allergies, right? How do you like to eat your peanut butter? Oh, and toast. Yeah, peanut butter and toast goes well, doesn't it? <coughs> Sorry? Sandwiches. Do you put anything else on the peanut butter, on the toast? Jam, peanut butter and jam, yes. Anybody put it on celery? No. No? no. <laughs> yeah. Bananas. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yes? What? Oh, box with celery, isn't it? And the raisins on top? I box on the log. I was ants on the log, but that sounds better. I'd rather be pops than ants, I think. Yes. Um, there's all kinds of different ways. I like it with apples. I really like to just dip my apples. Peanut butter? Sounds good. What do you think about um, peanut butter and mayo, mayonnaise? What? <laughs> no? No. Um, how about peanut butter and tuna? No. No. <laughs> um, you know, what about peanut butter and salsa? I like salsa. No. <laughs> you know what I've heard? There's such a thing as peanut butter mayo, and onion sandwich. I think this one would be really good. I'm going to ask you now, though. Yes, it does. But that's what I'm wondering. Has anybody tried peanut butter and mayonnaise? No. Has anybody tried peanut butter and tuna? No. I have tried with mayonnaise, but with the peanut uh, butter? No. No. Well, you know, no, you don't knock it unless you try. <laughs> I don't know. So maybe today, uh, this week, maybe you might want to try that. You done it. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting because I find that with a lot of people. They'll say, you know what? I don't like that. I don't like broccoli or I don't like Brussels sprouts. And I go, well, have you tried it? No. Well, then how in the world do you know? You know what? This kind of reminds me, this is probably maybe far-fetched, but this kind of reminds me of what Pastor talked about in, uh, in today's reading, because he was saying about, you know, we don't think about peanut butter and mayo going together. We think of peanut butter and jam going together, right? But not peanut butter and mayo. Well, kind of in the story today, in what God, or what uh, Pastor had talked about, it was about people. And he was talking about people that don't seem to go together. And in this case, it was Peter, who was a Jewish person, and um, in the Jews were God's chosen people. They were descendants of Abraham, and the Gentiles weren't related to the Jews. And the Jews hated them. They didn't like them. They didn't want them to be part of the family. They didn't want them to be part of the church. They didn't want that. But you know what? God had a different idea. He came to Peter, well, the Holy Spirit came to Peter in a vision, and was telling him, you know what? God's got a different plan. He's not, he didn't just come and make earth just for certain people, just for the Gentiles, or just for the Jews. He wanted 
wanted everybody to believe in him and be saved by him. That's what he wanted. And so, um, the people, Peter, and as the people with Peter were going, oh, I don't think that's right. I don't think we should be hanging around these people. And Peter said, no. Or Peter said, yes, I think we should because that's what God wants. Maybe not that's not our plan, but that's what God wants. So kind of like this for our story today, what we should be thinking about is that even though there are people that we don't like, some friends that we don't like, does that mean God does, shouldn't like them either? Do you think that? No, he wants them to be saved as well, right? And just because people maybe don't look like us, should we not like them? Should we not try to get to know them and be with them? <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe those people that we don't, that don't look like us, or we don't really care for, you know what? They may be made on these people. They may be people that if you once tried it, they're going to be good. They might be really nice. You might really, really like them. So that's God's message for us today, is to think about those people that even though we don't really like them, we don't usually hang around them because they're not like us, think about it. Think about what God's plan is. His plan is that everyone comes and is able to be baptized and be saved for, for us and that we'll all end up in heaven together. So I'd like to end with a Bible verse. I think you all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whenever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Thank you. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, number 633 at the Lamb's High Feast, we sing. <laughs>
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On our church mission trips to Haiti and to Nicaragua, as a dog lover, one of the heartbreaking things for me to see was how a great many people treated dogs. In these places, dogs are not looked at as pets. Instead, they're treated as pests, rodents carrying disease that you're supposed to just kick and throw rocks at and throw sticks at. You don't have dogs in your home down there. You don't walk them on a leash or domesticate them in any way, and you definitely don't feed them. And you know, that was hard for me to grasp. Maybe that's why a story that I read recently struck me and it brought my experiences back in my mind. The story started out, it said, you just don't do it. No way. You don't willingly allow a stray dog to crash your wedding. I mean, that dog would be dirty. Who knows where it came from? It may even be vicious and bite. No. I've never heard of a couple listing a stray dog on their wedding invitation list. And then the story goes on. The story is about a couple named Matthias and Marilla, who were getting married in Brazil in October of 2017. They had planned a beautiful outdoor ceremony, but then a storm had forced them under the shelter of a tent. Unfortunately for the guests, the storm also brought a dog. Oh, they tried to shoo him away, but the dog was persistent. Each time, he would come right back. And the third time, the dog did the unthinkable. He plopped right down on the bride's long veil as she was speaking her vows. And he just went to sleep. And you know what? Surprisingly, the bride left him there. So how did the story end? Well, the dog came and the dog went. The reception went on as planned, but it was interesting. The couple was a little sad to see the dog disappear. So sad, in fact, that days later they searched for him and they found him. They cleaned him up, they adopted him, and they named him Snoop. Now why am I telling you a story about dogs and not being welcomed and then being welcomed. Well, you see, back in biblical times, there were stories of other dogs who weren't welcomed as well. These dogs were people, though, specifically the Gentile people. You see, Gentile people are those who are not part of God's chosen family as the Jewish people were. They were not sons and daughters of Abraham. They weren't members of the club. The Gentile people, instead, they were looked at as dogs, referred to as dogs. And they were called by other names as well. Heathens, pagans, loathsome, an abomination, and outsiders. There wasn't much love, as Mark was talking about, there wasn't much love between these two groups of people. So much so that for a Jew, even eating with the Gentile would make them ceremonially unclean. And that's why the Jewish ruling people, the Pharisees, that's why they gave Jesus such a hard time when they said, see, he eats with sinners and tax collectors. So when our account for today of Peter going with three Gentile men from Caesarea to a, a man's house to preach to him, and to those gathered, who in the Jewish Christian's mind, it was like being surrounded by dogs who, would, who shouldn't be in the house, who shouldn't be being fed on God's word. It wasn't for them. They had forgotten. They had forgotten in the moment that Jesus had already foretold, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. And here's the key. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. You know, even prior to Jesus' words, God said to Abraham, 
No longer shall your name be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. You see, a faith relationship and covenant with the Lord, it did start with the, his chosen people, the children of Abraham. But then it extended to the Gentile people who would embrace it in faith and trust as the Holy Spirit was working. As Peter said, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then, God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I should stand in God's way? And you see, with those words, the Jewish Christians realized that God's love that Christ's sacrifice, the, the gift of faith, the gift of strength, the gift of eternal life, the things that we just watched Ori receive in holy baptism, it is for more than just the Jews. And they realize that it won't only be the Jewish Christians in heaven. There'll be Lutherans there. There'll be United members there. There'll be all the rest to embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in faith there. Now, why are we talking about these things? Well, because in sin, in judgment, like the Jewish Christians in, in Peter's day, we can look at others as not part of the family of believers. We can look at how they, they've messed up their lives. We can look at how they are literally dirty filthy and smelly. We can look at how they dress, how they talk, look at how they act, look at how poor they are, and they can't possibly fit in with us. They don't have a lifetime of history with us in our community. They don't have the same color of skin or the same ethnic background. Those city dwellers, those country folks, those spoiled and entitled people, and those simple people. How can they be a part of God's family? How easy it is for us to forget that the dogs, that the Jewish Christians were condemning these Gentiles, unless, unless you're a Jew, that's you and me. We are the Gentiles. And God in his mercy and his love has chosen to include you and me in his call to faith and in that call to eternity with him. He chose us filthy in sin and smelling of deserving everlasting condemnation and hell because he loves us, because he has invited us, he's called us to be his very own in faith. Now in sin... We can push away the people that the Holy Spirit is drawing close. The people who are, are just like us. Though maybe not in appearance or experience. They are poor, miserable sinners. People who know the ups and downs, the struggles of life, the hurts of this life, just like we do. People who are looking for help and hope, just as we are. Looking for forgiveness looking for release from the burdens of guilt and shame that they and we feel. They are looking for a family to belong to. They are seeing the care and love of God, and they want it for themselves. They need it. A care and a love that's especially revealed in God's people, revealed in you and in me. You know, the new... The new covenant that Jesus instituted by the shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary, it paid for the sins of all mankind, the whole world. Jesus' life, his, his suffering, his death on the cross, his victorious resurrection and ascension, it opened the doors of heaven to all, all who would cling to him in faith. Jesus he bought and he holds out the gift of forgiveness, life, and eternal life 
to all who would repent and believe in him. And you see, when believers are baptized like Ori just was, we are marked as a child of God. We are marked as one of his very own. We are covered in a robe of Christ's righteousness, and our sins are covered, and we're washed clean. We are seen in God's eyes as equal, neither male nor female, Jew or Gentile, slave or free. We are merely seen as his forgiven very own. And you see, these are the eyes that we are invited to have. There are a lot of Gentiles around us. There are our neighbors, our co-workers, our classmates. They might be those who attend a different church or maybe don't attend at all. They may be those you could never imagine within 10 feet of heaven, yet they believe or could believe in Jesus as we feed them with the word of God, with his love and with his promises. And you see, that's the key. That they are invited to be believers. No more and no less than you and I. Simply children of God. And as such, we're invited to embrace and stand on Peter's words. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could stand in God's way? You and I are, are just simply invited to love them, just as you are loved by our Lord, to invite them to cling to Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to walk alongside with them as they walk with you in faith, to remember Jesus' own words. And Mark said it. I didn't know you were going to use that. But Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and it says that, Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, like that dog at the wedding from our opening illustration, the one who was dirty and shooed away and missed and then sought out and adopted, who would have thought that our Lord would find us poor miserable sinners that we are daily and come again and again after us? And clean us up again and again and adopt us into his family. Who would have thought that the Lord would give us a place at his table? Who would have thought that he would have in his heart a love for us strays? But he does. And he wants us all. Thanks be to God for his love, for his mercy. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we'll continue with the singing of our offertory as the offering is brought forward.
Please rise for prayer. We pray, God, on behalf of the church and all people in their various needs. Jesus, you told Peter, what God has made clean, do not call common. Remember those people on the margins of society, Lord. Provide caring people and institutions, open doors of opportunity, and free them from the results of their past. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Holy Spirit, Peter and the others recognized that they couldn't stand in God's way. Guide clergy and lay leaders here and around the world to seek the Father's will. Guide them to find new ways to spread the gospel. We lift up the ministry of Bria and Zion, as well as the ministry of uh, Reverend Osaba and those under his care in Nicaragua to your direction. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Lord, over all, you foretold that often we will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. We see struggle, injustice, oppression, constant warfare, and unrest. Raise up wise leaders determined to serve and care for their citizens. Raise up good citizens that will support and encourage those entrusted over us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, by the faith given to us by the Holy Spirit, we look forward to the wedding feast of the Lamb, who will end all mourning, crying, and pain. Before we enter that time of rejoicing, we lift up those near and dear to us who are calling out in their struggles and recovery. We especially pray for Brian. We pray for all in our hearts. Lord, as fit your gracious plans, give them peace, joy, and relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, in your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We've already prayed the Lord's Prayer in our order of baptism, so we continue with the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And you can be seated as we hear the choir sing our closing hymn, Go Now in Peace.
announcements are in the bulletin. Uh, please make note that Elizabeth and I are be going away for wedding, uh, Friday wedding, so we're leaving Thursday for Chicago and be back Saturday. So I will be here next Sunday, but if any emergencies arise, uh, Pastor Will uh, is covering for me, so just get a hold of uh, Ken Rader and he'll, he'll get in contact with Pastor Will. What else uh, needs to be made mention of? Elizabeth? Uh, Tuesday night we'll have prayer group from 7.30 to 8.30 here, so if you would like to join us, or if you have any prayer requests, please let us know and we will lift them up during that time. Tuesday night, 7.30. Okay, Cindy? And I was just going to say, hopefully people notice the free little, not really library, but, I don't know, bookstore, just take for free, but we, um, thanks to Pastor, has built that for us. What else? Where are we pointing? Doors. Um, this year, Big Brothers and Big Sisters will be holding their Bowl for Kids Sake. And we have some of our confirmation students who will be participating. There is a, a sponsor sheet that's um, out on the bulletin board. And if you wish to support um, Team Zion, uh, please uh, sign up on the sheet and give your money to Leanne, who is um, organizing uh, their, the students this year for that event. Um, also, I believe our Elder and Mall ladies will be putting up a sponsor sheet um, also for our event that we'll be going to. There are seven ladies who are going to be going to the St. Catharines area um, in uh, June of, uh, 11th, or 10th and 11th also, and um, six of us from here. And there's a mission event um, instead of doing a walk at the event, they're asking uh, congregations to support this from their societies. Um, so um, if you're wanting to sponsor that, we'd appreciate that also. And later the sponsor sheet will be going up for that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Joanne? There's no choir Wednesday night. It's in the bulletin, but there's no choir. Okay. But there is Bible class. All right, Elizabeth? I think so. There you go. I, didn't, I don't think I did. Well, I was told I couldn't do anything Thursday because we got to go to Chicago. So, it's not, okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, so there is Bible class Wednesday night, so please note that. And as well, please note that this coming Wednesday will be uh, Dorothy Van Dahl's funeral uh, here at the church at uh, 2 o'clock, I believe it is. Uh, so, uh, just so you note that as well, that that's going to be going on. Anything else? Seeing nothing? Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.